What's up YouTube? This is Elliot for Epic Tutorials, bringing you my epic guide to Filmic Pro version five. This is the best professional video camera app for the iOS platform. And if you wanna get an idea of just how good it is, check out the trailer for Tangerine. This film got a theatrical release and won multiple awards and was shot entirely using this app. As always, if this helps you out, like and subscribe for more. And thanks a lot for watching. The Filmic Pro interface is deceptively simple in version 5, but still gives you access to the same professional features this app is known for. In the center of the interface you have a square focus reticle and a circular exposure reticle. The focus reticle can be dragged around the screen to set focus, and the exposure reticle works in the same manner. Just drag it to the part of your image that you want to be correctly exposed, and then let go. In the lower left of the interface, you have three lock icons, which when pressed, will prevent Filmic Pro from making any automatic adjustments. Starting on the far left is the white balance lock, followed by a focus lock and an exposure lock. You can tap any of these again to unlock them and have Filmic Pro set these levels automatically again. A nice feature in Filmic Pro is that you can simply tap the focus or exposure reticles to lock and unlock them without having to use the designated lock buttons in the lower left with the exception of the white balance. In the center of the interface you have the timecode medallion, which features the timecode counter, which displays your record time in hours, minutes, and seconds. And just above that you have a battery indicator in red and an available storage indicator in green. And as you start to run out of juice and storage, the colored bars will move closer and closer to their respective icons and give you a good idea when you're gonna to need to recharge or clear some space. The cog icon will give you access to Filmic Pro's settings, which we're going to look at in more detail in a few minutes. The film strip icon gives you access to your Filmic library, and you can tap this to view your recorded clips, as well as perform more advanced actions that we'll look at later. The red record icon will start and stop recording. When recording, you'll notice that the settings and the Filmic library buttons disappear, and also your timecode counter will begin. Now, if you've used previous versions of this app, you're probably wondering where Filmic Pro's many other features are located, which used to be in the settings menu. Well, in the upper left, you'll notice the action slider arrow. Tapping on this will give you access to the audio gain control, which lets you drag the slider up and down to increase and decrease your audio levels. As you can see, the levels meter will let you know if your audio is close to peaking or peaking, so make sure it doesn't get near the yellow or red it should rest ideally in the mid-range green section for best results. To close the slider and return to the action slider, just tap once in the viewfinder. Next is the rule of thirds guide, which can be turned on and off and is great not just for composition, but also getting your horizon line straight. Next to that, you have image stabilization, which can be toggled on and off, but is only available to the iPhone 6 and later. You know it's on when you see the outline around the icon. Tapping the info icon will launch the Filmic Pro Quick Start Guide in Safari. And next to that, you can tap the camera icon to switch between the rear and front facing cameras. The light bulb will turn your iPhone's torch on and off. And if you tap and hold, you'll get access to the torch intensity slider, which you can hide by just tapping in the viewfinder again. Lastly, you have the zoom controls, which allow you to zoom in and out using the plus and minus keys and I'm gonna show you some more advanced zoom features later on in this video. So now that we understand Filmic Pro's interface, let's take a look at probably the most important feature of this app, and that's the settings menu. First up, you can select your resolution, bitrate, and aspect ratio. Normally, you'll want to leave it set to 16 by nine, but you can experiment with even wider screen formats and square aspect ratios like one-to-one -one if your end product is destined for somewhere like Instagram. Below this, you can cycle between different resolutions starting at 540p and go all the way up to 4K Ultra HD if you're using the new iPhone 6S or 6S Plus. If you have the iPhone 6 or below, you should probably choose 1080p for the best possible results. 50 megabits per second is the fastest bitrate available for all resolutions other than 4K. If you shoot in 4K, you can actually record at 100 megabits a second. To put this in perspective, the iPhone records 1080p video in the default camera app at just 17 megabits a second. And if you have the iPhone 6S, 
it records 4K at 50 megabits a second. So Filmic Pro allows you to double or more than double the amount of information you can capture. The only reason you'd want to shoot anything less than Filmic Pro's highest setting is to save space. To return to the settings menu, just tap resolution again. Next up, we have another of Filmic Pro's killer features, the ability to set your frame rate, a feature that Apple's own camera app is missing, much to the disappointment of those needing 25 frames a second. 24 frames per second is the standard for cinematic capture and is a key factor in achieving the film look. But if you're aiming to produce content for the web or TV, you will want to choose either 25 frames a second if you live in a country that uses the PAL format like Australia, Japan or Europe, and 30 frames a second if you live in a country that uses the NTSC format like the United States. If you notice that higher frame rates are greyed out like they are here, this is because they are not supported at your currently selected resolution, so you'd need to reduce the resolution in order to access them, and these are used for smooth slow motion capture. The next setting we have access to is audio, which allows you to set your audio file formats. And if you want lossless sound quality, choose AIFF. But again, if you want to save space at the expense of quality, you can choose AAC. It's important to know that Filmic Pro will allow you to use any iOS compatible microphone over the built-in mic. So if you want to get a better idea of what microphones you can use, check out our epic guide to Pro iOS audio by clicking here. You can also choose the sample rate and you really should always be set to 48 kilohertz as this is the global standard for film audio, but it does also support 44.1 kilohertz, which is used for music production and amazingly lets you go all the way up to 96 kilohertz, which is probably overkill, but this will let you get the most out of iOS compatible mics that support this like the Apogee Mic 96K or the Sennheiser Clipmic Digital. If you want complete manual control over your audio levels, make sure you disable automatic gain correction and for best results, turn off voice processing and the peak limiter. Although if you are shooting run and gun and don't have the time or skills to set the levels yourself, you'll probably want to leave automatic gain correction and the peak limiter on, but I recommend that you keep voice processing off at all times. Now to save you having to set these options every time you launch Filmic Pro, we can save and load them as a preset by tapping on presets and selecting save current settings as a preset. You can now easily load these settings or swipe from the right to left to delete or rename them. Lastly, we have the hardware menu. This will allow you to enable support for specific accessories like the Moondog anamorphic adapter, as well as lock the screen orientation, which can be very handy. You can also turn off the preview, which I'm not sure why you'd want to do that as it makes the screen go blank, but maybe it's there to save battery life. And a cool feature is the ability to tap once to hide the interface like so. But again, I'm going to leave this off for now. Now that we know how the interface is laid out and what all the settings do, let's look at filming using Filmic Pro's incredibly powerful slider controls to not only manually control the focus, exposure, white balance, audio gain, and zoom, but also how to smoothly move between different states using the new pull-to-point slider capabilities that allow you to do things like pull focus or precisely automate zooms and exposure changes. We've already learned how to set and lock the focus, exposure, and white balance by dragging the reticles around the screen, but what if you need even more control to fine-tune your image? Well, if you tap and hold on a reticle, it will reveal the slider. If we tap and hold the focus reticle, we can gain complete manual control over the focal distance by dragging up and down. When we have the focus we want, just tap outside of the slider and it locks that focus point. If we do the same thing on the exposure reticle, this time you get access to the manual ISO, shutter speed and exposure bias controls which are the sort of features usually reserved for high-end video cameras and DSLRs. ISO determines the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light and is an electronic, not optical way of adjusting the brightness of your image. Just know that the higher the ISO, the more noise you introduce into the picture. So for best results, try to select a low ISO and use additional lights if needed to brighten up your scene. The shutter speed needs to be double your frame rate for smooth motion. As I'm shooting in PAL at 25 frames a second, 
the shutter should be set to 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting at 30 fps, then 1 60th, and so on. If you go lower than this, you can start to get interesting strobe effects, but I'm going to leave this at 1 50th. You can use the exposure bias to automatically adjust both the ISO and shutter speed at once, but it will override the shutter speed, so I prefer not to use this. Likewise, tap holding on the white balance icon will let you manually adjust both the white balance and also the tint. Now with any of the expander controls, you might notice these two white lines here, and they allow you to set pull points, and the easiest way to demonstrate this is with the focus. So I'm going to tap and hold on the focus lock to bring up the slider, and let's program in a precise rack focus by setting our foreground focus point first, then we tap the focus icon. You'll notice that the pull point jumps up. Now let's set our focus point for our background element and do the same. Now I can hit record and simply tap a pull point and have Filmic Pro automatically move to it, which is amazing. What if the focus pull is too fast or too slow? Just swipe from left to right on the slider to reveal the speed slider, which can be dragged up and down to adjust the speed of the effect. This also works with any other control. Let's animate a shift in the white balance in exactly the same way. I'll tap and hold on the white balance lock, set your first white balance value and then tap the icon. Then set the second value and tap the icon to snap the pull point to it. Now I can tap on this pull point to test the speed. If it's too slow, I can swipe out the speed slider and drag it to the top. Let's hit record and perform a pull. Next, let's look at Filmic Pro Zoom Slider. To show the zoom slider, tap the action slider in the upper left and then tap the magnifying glass icon. Tapping the plus button will zoom in in increments, or you can tap and hold either the plus or minus buttons to zoom in and out smoothly. To change the zoom speed, you need to tap and hold the magnifying glass icon in the action slider, which will reveal the speed slider. You will notice that the further I zoom in, the zoom status bar will go from green to orange to red, and this represents the level of quality loss you will experience, as this is digital zoom, not optical. I personally never use the digital zoom, but if you stick within the green area, most people will probably never notice the degradation in video quality, especially if it's being compressed for online viewing. A cool feature of the zoom in Filmic Pro is the ability to set zoom targets. Start by setting your first zoom point. I'm going to zoom all the way out and then tap and hold the first zoom target. And then you'll see it tells you what the zoom level is. Then I'm going to move my second zoom point and load this as my second target by tap holding. And finally, I set my last zoom point. Now I can tap each zoom target preset to instantly zoom to that position, which is really cool. To clear a zoom preset, just tap and hold on it and it will return to its empty state. Lastly, let's look at the features available in the Filmic library for editing, managing and sharing the footage you shoot in Filmic Pro. Start by tapping the film strip to open the Filmic library and you'll see your clips listed with the newest at the top. Tap a clip to view at full screen and press the play button to preview. You have the option to go to the start of a clip or fast forward and rewind. The scissor icon will let you trim the length of the clip within the app, but be aware that it doesn't overwrite your original. It just makes a copy and uses more, not less storage on your device. Just drag the start and end selection handles to select what you want to keep and then tap the tick to confirm or the X to cancel. Next, you can tap the slider icon to make basic image adjustments like exposure, contrast, white balance, saturation, and tint. But ideally, most of these should be set correctly when you film, but it is a nice extra feature if you need it, and unlike the trim feature, it will overwrite your original clip. Also, it's important to know that you're unable to use this on footage greater than 2K in resolution on the iPhone 6S. Next up, you get the option to downsample your clip. What this will do is reduce the bitrate and file size of the clip and save it as a copy without overwriting your original. This is perfect if you need to email a clip or want to share it online. Tapping the export icon will allow you to save your Filmic Pro footage to your camera roll, which is great if you want to import it into an editing app like iMovie or Pinnacle Studio. 
Lastly, tap the folder icon to either copy to the camera roll, and this is no different to what we just did before, or you can tap the other archival options. And this gives you a few more really cool features like the ability to save your files to apps that support this feature, like Goodreader and my personal fave, the iClips app, which accompanies the iClips, which is a lightning compatible external storage device. Uh, and you can watch our review of that here, but pretty much this gives you a super quick way of copying files to a USB flash drive that can be loaded onto a computer. If we return to the main Filmic library window, you can copy multiple clips to the camera roll by tapping each clip to add it to the selection. Then tap the camera roll icon and you have the option to copy the clips to the camera roll, which will mean you can have two versions, one in the Photos app, one in Filmic Pro, which can be good if you need to make a backup, or you can choose to copy and delete, which will delete the originals in your Filmic Pro library after it's copied them to Photos. Lastly, tapping the minus icon will allow you to permanently delete all selected clips. All right, thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something new and this helped you out, like and subscribe and share for more. And if you're filming with this app, let us know about your experiences with it in the comment field below. And of course, if you shoot something and post it online, link to it there as well. Thanks a lot for watching. My name's Elliot Fitzroy, and we'll be back with more epic tutorials, reviews, and unboxings soon.